Now the next feature that I'd like to add to my backdoor is to be able to download files from the hacked computer into my own computer. Now again, the method that I'm gonna show you can be used to transfer files between two computers using sockets using Python. It doesn't have to be a backdoor. So you can use it regardless of what your program is as long as you need to transfer files between two computers. So keeping this generic, let's try to think what happens when a file is transferred on a system. So let's say you went to a file on your own computer, you press right click copy and then you go to a different place and press right click paste. What happens? Basically, there is no such thing on the system as copy and paste. What happens is your system is going to read the file as a sequence of characters. Each file, even if it's an image or a song, it is basically a sequence of characters. So your system is going to read this file and then when you press paste on your target location on the next place where you want to paste this file, it's going to create an empty file and then put this sequence of characters inside this new file. So if we want to implement a way to download a file from this Windows machine, then we need to first of all read this file in here through our backdoor, send it through our reliable send method, receive it in here, and then create an empty file and put the contents inside our new file. Now, this might sound a little bit long and complicated, but you'll see that this is very, very easy, especially that we already structured our program really, really well. So the first step is going to be reading the file from our backdoor. So I'm gonna implement a method and I'm gonna call this method read file. And this will take self and the file path to read as inputs. And I actually showed you before how to write a file in the download and execute payload. But we never really covered reading files. Now the syntax to read a file is actually very, very similar to writing a file. So the first thing that we need to do is open this file. And just like we did in the download and execute, we can use the with keyword in order to open this file. So I'm going to say with open and the first argument is going to be the path to the file to open. So this is going to be the path that we get as an input. And then we're going to specify the method that we want to open this file as. So for example, when we were writing, we specified that we want to write this file. Now, what we want to do, we want to read this file. So we're gonna put R as the method of opening this file. And I want to treat all the files as binary files. And therefore I'm going to add a B to the method. Now you can use just R if you just want to read normal text files, but if you add B, we'll be able to read files as binaries. So this will allow us to transfer normal files such as images and all of that and other text files. Then we're gonna say we want to open this file as file. So this is the variable that we're gonna use to reference the file that we opened and any, everything that we need to do while this file is open needs to be implemented within this block of code in here. So we don't really need to do anything complicated. We just want to read this file. So we can read the file by doing file dot read. File being the name that we use to reference the file that we just opened. And then dot read is a method in order to read the contents of the file. And what I want to do is I want to actually return the contents of this file. So we're going to say I want to return the file dot read. Now I've actually covered the with syntax in greater detail when we were programming the download and execute payload. So if this is still a little bit vague for you, then please go back and revise it there. I even spoke more about the methods that we can use in here when reading and writing files. 
But right here, you can see that we have a very, very basic method to read a file as a binary file. We're saying, first of all, we're opening the file using the open keyword. We're referencing the file that we're opening as file. And then we're reading the contents of this file using the dot read method and returning it from this method. Now, this is all good. Now we're able to read files. And we want to use this when the user tries to download a file. So we're going to add another option here to this if statement. So we're going to do elif. The first element of the command that the user sent is equal to download. Then my command result is going to be equal to self dot read file. And the file that we want to read is going to be the second element of the command list. So this is very similar to the path that we're capturing in here when the person uses the CD. So when the person tries to download the file, they're going to type download followed by the file name that they want to download, like so. So the first element is going to be download and the second element is going to be the file name. So we can access this by typing command and this will be the first element of the command list and that's it now when the user enters download followed by a file name this check will be true so we're going to call the read file we're going to give it the file name as the path this will open the path as file it'll read it and return it so it'll be captured by my command result and then this will be sent back to my listener. Now, the listener is going to receive this in the result variable in here. And then it's going to print it on my screen. But I don't want this to be printed on my screen. I want this to be downloaded as a file. So now we have to do the final step, which is create an empty file and put all of the result that we're going to get inside this file so that we will have an identical file to the file that exists on the other side. 